broken. So we can't sabotage the it. There's an it he has set aside for us corporately and individually. You hear what I'm saying? But there are some principles that need to be followed through. I told you there's a promise and there's a principle. There's a divine sovereignty that is connected to the promise. Then there's human responsibility that's connected to the principle. You can't do one without the other. Some of us haven't fulfilled the other part. We just think God's sovereignty is going to be enough. No. There's a human responsibility. There's a principle that we have to activate. You say, God going to bless me. People yeah. use it and say, God going to bless me, but they don't tithe. Yeah. You're not going to be blessed. Huh? Yeah. You say, God going to do certain things, but there is some requirements and some prerequisites yeah. that is necessary for us to get some of the things that he has, the responsibility <laughs> and the weight of what God has placed on us. We got to get it in our spirit. Just like Gideon and the boys. Remember Gideon, the whole story, I'm not going over in Judges. And he told him, he said, hey, Gideon. He picked Gideon. Gideon didn't believe he was picking them. He said, I'm going to put a fleece out, God. Out of them. <clears throat> Make the do the rest on the fleece twice. Remember? Then all of a sudden, God says, okay, since you a coward, don't want to bring here, you can't do it, you can't see it. Get you about 33,000 men. He said, go down to the water. I think it was Moray. Moray. Yeah, he told them to go down to the water. They had to do something. And then, you know, he sorted through the people. All the way from 33,000 to 300. It's Gideon's remnant. But they had to go down to the water. And they had to cup their hands and put the water in their hand. Oh, that's powerful. All of what I just said. Didn't teach on that as well. The water of God. We got to be able to bend our knees and get before the Lord. That's a part of sanctification. Can you change your position? Are you willing to prostrate yourself? Are you willing to humble yourself? Are you, you following me? That, that's what I'm saying. That's what's required of us. I'm telling you. There's a sanctification God has required for us. There's a sanctification God has what required for us. So if I can go through many, 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 many stories. But one of the best stories I like. Well, one, well, two of them. One of them in John 17 where Jesus just automatically sanctified us. How, how did he sanctify us? Through his word. Mm -hmm. Remember he told us, I sanctify you through my word. My mm -hmm. word is truth. Yeah. Yeah. John 17 and 17. You got to learn the scriptures, y'all. Yeah. He's going to sanctify me with his word. Not just scriptures. Right. Mm -hmm. The living word, the raven word will sanctify you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It'll renew you in the spirit of mind. Then you won't have to wrestle. Then you won't have to kick. Then I won't have to check you, counsel you, cast out of you, lay hands on you. Huh? And then have to treat you like babies and say, hey, you know what, we, we can do this thing. Let's come on, come on, let's do it. Because it'll sanctify your mind and you don't have no other agenda but pleasing him. That's what sanctification says. I got it. You know what I'm saying? The prince of this world coming. I love that. The prince of this world coming that find there's nothing in there. He's knocking on my door. He's throwing rocks at me. He's, he's trying to get at me. You know, even after yesterday, you know, I'm just telling the enemy, I said, no, no, you're not going to just get after me. You're not going to just gonna get me. Yeah. There's something, there's a purpose in everything. Yeah. Amen. A purpose in everything. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to break our focus mm -hmm. and abort our assignment. He wants to, and that's how he likes to shuffle things in our life. And then we find ourselves caught on the weight of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we walk in principle, yes. walk in the word and let the word do the work, yes. Yes. then the things he sent against us won't distract us, won't distort us, amen, won't sabotage us, won't break our focus. Yes. This is what we need to get to. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest stories I like is when, in, in the New Testament is when Jesus, in John 13, when he stripped himself of a cloth. And watch the boys. Mm -hmm. Remember Peter? The one we, we the baptism, uh, uh, I don't forgot what they call it. We baptized his foot with water, the feet, the feet washing. Yeah. I went through all I don't wash so many feet. I refuse to wash anybody's feet, let God tell me. It's one time, so it's not doctrine. 
those that are watching. Yeah. It was a ceremony, not a sacrament. Right. That'll work for you. But the whole story, I like the backdrop, because Peter found out when Jesus was trying to prepare him for that Passover, because yeah. in every feast there's a, there's a sanctification. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. In Passover there was a sanctification. Uh -huh. Pentecost, there was a sanctification. That's why he spent 40 days in that room. Yes. That's why he spent 40 days with him. But y'all looking at me funny. Yes. Yes. Jesus <laughs> spent 40 days with him. Uh -huh. Why? Because there was a sound coming of a rushing and mighty wind. Uh -huh. Something that the world had never experienced. But God was doing something in them as a precursor to a release of an immeasurable grace Man. brought to them by the Spirit of God. You understand? Mm -hmm. This is powerful. If you can believe it, you can receive it. And Jesus prepared them. Mm -hmm. And Peter, the big boy, with all the answers. Now nah, don't wash me. And said, you know what? If I don't do anything for you, Peter, you will have no part with me. Mm -hmm. He said, look, do my hands, do my feet. He said, you're going to do it. Uh, Calgon, take me away. <laughs> he said, do what you got to do. And all those are symbolisms I ain't got time but you need to understand don't be afraid of the word so when somebody in the deeper end of the pool come to you and say well you know what sanctification ain't for the day that's the part of touch not taste not handle not mm -hmm. no 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 that's protection yeah. 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 it ain't do's and don'ts yeah. Yeah. it ain't what somebody trying to keep from me yeah. that's right. it is protection yes. amen Protocols and principles are protections. Yes, yes. Those are hedges in the walls of protection. Yes, yes. The walls of salvation, the place where God is trying to secure you and keep you from the different things that wants to come up yes, against you. Yes. I'm here to tell you, you got to believe that in your spirit, man. Yes. And tell yourself, you know what? Just because I can't handle it, it's a reason for it. Yes. When God, you know, interrupts you <laughs> and you are uh, snacking. Or you feel the urge to do some things that are not necessarily uh, compatible with the nature that's in you. That's mm -hmm. a life source that's in us. The seed of righteousness is in us. Yeah, I'm trying to bring it down where y'all can get it. You got to tell yourself, it's for the long haul. It's for the long haul. You know, my, my, my uh, nephews always tell me, said, one thing I can say about you, I can ask nothing in all the years that I can lay against you. Mm -hmm. Nothing. He said, if I was going to go to any church, it would be your church. Because you're a man of God in a pulpit and a man of God at home. Yeah. I've seen you, how you handle the family. You know what I'm saying? And I got, and I used to tell him, thank you, nephew. I just got excited to see that he, even though he didn't commit fully to what we were doing. He recognized that the level of boundaries and respect and, and the honor that I had for my walk and what honor that I had for God. Not necessarily that I need to be seen by other people. But if you do it God's way, automatically you're going to be seen by other people. I ain't going to do this for nobody. Just between me, I can just do what I want. You emasculate your purpose. You sanitize your testimony. When you start saying, I do what I want to when I want to. Mm -hmm. No, your life is supposed to affect people, even, even if you're not ordained. Yeah. Yeah. He told us in Matthew 5, 14 and through 16, he said that men may see your good works. And what happened? Yeah. Glorify you. Not that men should see your titles, mm -hmm. your anointing, your casting out of devils. Mm -hmm. How many churches you over? How many people in your church? But that men can see your good work, see the fruit that's in your life. And we don't have a timetable on when they can recognize that or when they can give their life to the Lord. But we'll leave the results up to God. One plant, one water, but the Lord gives the increase. So I'm not worried on trying to figure out when all this is going to happen. I'm just going to keep plowing, keep serving, keep my hand on the plow, not looking back, doing the things that's needful, doing the things that's necessary, doing the things that's uncomfortable. Because yes. it is right. uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 
And this generation is trying to remove all of the uncomfortability yeah. from the scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. They want to give you a peaches and cream gospel. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it ain't peaches and cream. Mm -hmm. I watched one of my friends talk about deliverance and spiritual warfare. I said, there ain't none. Oh, there are. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you. You ain't got to worry about it. You're going to show up. <laughs> we don't look for demons. Right. Hey, Amen. We don't do spiritual math like we used to. Right. Hey man, I used to give a checklist for like 20, it was like 20 pages long, remember? This long, I want to know everything so we can get you set free. Yeah. Yeah. We don't do that no more. That was a whole lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Wore me out. We're dealing with curses and oh man, just dig all through your life and trying to figure out what, why you all whacked out and why, all that stuff. Which is all based on some of it is pride. I know it now. But I still believe, although we don't have to go through the logistics of making sure you're free, I still believe there's some things that's in us that's not of God that need to be driven or cast out of us. Amen. Christians have issues, things that they have, even in the finished work. Yeah. Let me go, go to 1 Peter 4. I'm going to leave that alone because I'm getting ready to do some series on spiritual warfare. Amen. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got to get some soldiers. Yes. Yes. Thank God for lovers. You got to fall in love first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Worship. That's what brings you to the love walk. But to execute judgment that's written, we're supposed to be soldiers. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the church split. Y'all want to join in on this side? <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're a little top heavy over here. We're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to be soldiers. Yes. And some of us haven't figured it out yet. Yes. Because we were taught we'd just be in the pew and sit there. Mm -hmm. Now we're supposed to advance the kingdom. Yeah, mm -hmm. And in order to advance the kingdom, you're going to have to raise that sword from time yeah. to time. Yeah. The sword of the spirit is your tongue. Right. Your mouth. Yeah. We ain't going to use the sword back in the day. Jesus. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, but I tell you what, you can lose some weight, break some sweat. <laughs> I never lost any weight though. But you can break sweat. <laughs> <laughs>